Check out monorail.com, America's affordable investment app made for conservatives who want to keep their hard-earned money with companies that share their value. Download the Monorail app today. Join Monorail. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dennis Prager Show, coming to you from Florida, where I speak tomorrow night for my wonderful Tampa station and those of you in the Tampa Bay area. Love to see you. I, I don't know if it's sold out, but check with the station and you'll find out. I think that uh, Tucker Carlson's program last night was among the most important television hours in, in, in American, modern American. Well, you only have modern American history. There was no television before modern America. So... I will just say, I don't know of a more important hour. As I have said to you for much of my broadcast and publishing life, truth is not a left-wing value. The left lies because it's effective. The, The human conscience does not stop the left. They never ask when they say something, is it true? They ask, is it effective? I wrote... Within weeks of the January 6th events, I wrote that the Democrats were using it the way the Nazis used the Reichstag to suppress liberty in America, and I was right. I'm not comparing the entirety of Nazism to the Democratic Party. There are no death camps, concentration camps, or Kristallnacht, etc., etc. I'm well aware. I'm simply giving you a historical analogy of the use of an event in order to suppress liberty. And that is exactly what the Democratic Party, which is increasingly indistinguishable from the Communist parties of the various Communist countries, that is what it has done. It is a gigantic lie that it was an insurrection. It would be the only unarmed insurrection in history, to the best of my knowledge. Do you know of any unarmed insurrections? And there are people in prison who are political prisoners. I have spoken to some of them from prison. For me, who loves this country deeply, to know that my country now has political prisoners, I have to admit, is a very difficult thing for me to perceive and to acknowledge and to broadcast. But I am committed to truth more than I am to any other single thing. And therefore... I have to tell you the truth. We have political prisoners in this country, just like the Soviet Union did. This man who was, what, the shaman, the the guy who went in, dressed up as the way he was, bare-chested, paint on his body, and so on. This guy's been in prison for four years. The videos played that they hid the lying, deceptive, deceitful Democratic Party. Did I say that the Democratic Party was lying, deceptive, and deceitful? That is its nature. It does so with pride, you must understand. Because Once again, validating my thesis that the human conscience is pathetic. It is the worst human beings can dull their conscience. The Democratic Party is an example of it. It's not because I differ with their policies. It's because they lie and deceive and suppress and arrest. That's why. I don't care if I disagree with any given individual on any given policy. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the evil that they are doing in this country. Like the uh, massive Democratic Party support for taking mentally ill kids and chopping their breasts off. They're despicable, the Democratic Party. And if you vote for them, shame on you. You have no possible excuse. I don't care how much you hate Donald Trump. Nothing Donald Trump has done is comparable to what the Democratic Party has done to damage society. Anyway, Donald Trump is not the president now. A a vile human being named Joe Biden is. When you uh, watch the the videos that the Democratic Party suppressed for the last two years. When you watch them, you realize that they have lied to us about the entirety of January 6th. 
the very word insurrection is a gigantic lie. It is a lie that you would expect of a fascist, communist, even Nazi regime. Once again, for leftists looking to defame me, I'm not saying the Democrats are Nazis. I'm saying that what they did in this instance is reminiscent of what the Nazis did with the Reichstag fire. That's either true or not true. But to the left, the question of whether it is true or not true is not a a question. The question is only, is it effective in gaining power and in consolidating power and smashing conservatives? That is all that matters. When you watch the videos and you see the way of the police escorted, basically escorted, the people of January 6th. With a great question still remaining, how did the gigantic, what are known as the Columbus doors, how, how were they opened? They had to be opened from the inside. That we have yet to hear a response to. So I'm going to play for you from Tucker Carlson last night. He uses the word lie frequently, and that is because it is accurate. That's all that you've been subjected to as an American for the last two years with regard to January 6th. Lies. Lie after lie after lie. That's why they're so angry that these videos have been released. Perhaps the single most important thing that the Republican House has done is to release these videos. So here is Tucker Carlson last night. Within hours of January 6th, literally hours, you began to hear that day described as a deadly insurrection, and not described by one news outlet or one politician, but in unison by all of them, almost like it was coordinated. A deadly insurrection. That's how history may record January 6th. But the tape that we reviewed from within the building on that day proves it was neither an insurrection nor deadly. Here it is. January 6th, when an estimated 2,000 rioters breached the Capitol building, causing the deaths of five police officers. Certain dates echo throughout history. December 7th, 1941. September 11th, 2001. And January 6th. Am I beat officers with anything so they had on So one minute, them. one Happy minute there. Step. Hold Bye. on, Sean. That was Kamala Harris. I'm trying to choose my words. If I were to present any American as exemplifying the weakness of the human conscience, I would probably choose her. The woman is a gigantic nothing, stands for nothing except for gaining political power for herself. She stands for nothing. January 6th will stand along with the the invasion by the Japanese of Pearl Harbor, of the United States of Pearl Harbor, and with 9-11. Do you know what... Do you know what desecration of the memory of the sailors drowned and burned to death on December 7, 1941? The 3,000 Americans slaughtered by Islamic terrorists on 9-11. Do you know what an insult it is to their memories to compare January 6th when zero people died except for some among the protesters? Zero? Do you know how much you were lied to by the New York Times, the center of the lying world of the left, about Officer, what is this, Sicknick? Yes, Officer Sicknick. Remember that? Killed by a, somebody beat his head in with a fire extinguisher. All were lies. And do you know what? 99% of Americans who vote Democrat don't know a word of what you are now hearing. That's right. 
They have chosen to be ignorant and believe lies. There is no excuse for voting Democrat. You have chosen to believe lies if you vote Democrat. And there are people languishing in solitary confinement and in horrific conditions because of utterly, utterly dishonest, corrupt Washington, D.C. juries and the utterly corrupt Merrick Garland and the FBI and the utterly corrupt Department of Justice. If that doesn't make you angry, I have a question. What does? I'd like to introduce you to Monorail, America's investment app that takes you from where you are to where you want to be. Monorail is an investment and savings app that is made for patriots by patriots. Doesn't matter whether you're an Apple fan or if you prefer Android, Monorail is available in both environments and online at monorail.com. Monorail is safer for users with bank-level encryption and biometrics. Your money is protected with Monorail through Securities Investor Protection Corporation and the FDIC. No matter how you engage with Monorail, you're getting the security and safety that you need. Whether you're adding funds to your investment account, looking to buy a stock, or putting money aside for future purchases. With Monorail, you can put your money where it matters and utilize the economic power that built this country. Don't go somewhere else to trade stocks. Monorail gives you the freedom to purchase whole or fractional shares in companies you believe in. It only takes five minutes to download the app and set up. Join the pro-America money movement. Join Monorail. All right, everybody. Dennis Prager here. I'm looking. I haven't looked at it since I wrote about it. I, I wrote about the the labeling of insurrection within five days of the, of the of the event and spoke about how it's a parallel to the Reichstag fire, the gigantic lie of calling it an insurrection. Now that you see the videos, it is clear the whole thing is a lie. It's one of the great hoaxes of American history perpetrated by the entire left-wing media, which is called the mainstream media, whether it's the Washington Post, New York Times, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, NPR, it doesn't matter. They all uh, have no commitment to truth on any issue that affects their views of life. They're committed to truth on, as I always give an example, an earthquake in Ecuador. They will probably give you accurate data on the the numbers of people killed because it has nothing to do with the left-right difference. But wherever there is a left-right difference, they just lie. They just do. The, the use of the term insurrection and blaming it on Donald Trump. Donald Trump asked for the National Guard to be mobilized to protect the Capitol, and Nancy Pelosi declined, and so did the mayor of Washington, D.C., did you know that? I'll bet you not a single relative of yours who votes Democrat knows this. Not one. In the entire country of the people voting Democrat, including liberals, not just leftists, I would say 1%, maybe 1%, 1 out of 100, knows that Donald Trump, as president at that time, asked for there to be National Guard set up thousands of them to guard the Capitol. And Nancy Pelosi said no. The Democrats wanted what happened on January 6th. I I can't believe I'm saying it. Because it's so almost unbelievable. But when you enter the left, all that matters is how, for them, is what works. What sustains and increases our power? If the country is a victim, they don't give a damn. The left hates this country. It hates civilization. It hates Judaism and Christianity. It hates everything that makes a good life. It hates artistic beauty. It hates musical beauty. It hates architectural beauty. I don't know what produces such human beings. I don't. I understand understand murderers. I understand... I understand bank robbers. I understand a lot of bad things that are done. I don't understand the desire to wreck everything that is beautiful. 
I don't. I admit it. I know it's there. It's profound. The left embodies it, and it has for 100 years, but I can't say that I relate to it. We continue with Tucker Carlson. Pull a fire extinguisher. Police officers died. Donald Trump supporters who, of course, rioted and killed police officers. By the evening of January 6th, the Democratic Party and its publicists in the national news media had settled on a description of what had happened that day. They distilled an enormous number of highly complex events, events that even now we don't fully understand, into a single emotionally related political slogan, which they've repeated for years with remarkable discipline. January 6th, they said, was a deadly insurrection. There was a deadly insurrection that the right wing is trying to cover up. He incited a deadly insurrection. Incited a deadly insurrection. The violent, deadly insurrection on the Capitol nine months ago, it was about white supremacy in my view. A deadly insurrection. All right, hold Everything on. About Th- that's that Biden. Is- Biden's the scummiest of all of them. And I mean that. I believe that he is a, a loathsome human being, independent of his presidency. But he has used his presidency to hurt this country and perhaps uh, for the foreseeable future, perhaps forever. White supremacy. It wasn't an insurrection, and it had nothing to do with white supremacy. And he has this lie. Just like he says there are Americans who want to lynch blacks. As president, he says he said that. God, I know Republicans, it's painful. This is one of the, I don't find much painful personally because I have thick skin and because I'm a happy guy. But I have to admit, because I know some people who are Republicans and who have been Republicans for much or all of their life or voting life, and who voted for Biden. I wonder I wonder what they think. I don't know. I'm just thinking aloud. Continue, please. Why? Very little about January 6th was organized or violent. Surveillance video from inside the Capitol shows mostly peaceful chaos. But the slogan worked. The term deadly carries enormous emotional power, which is why they used it. To prove the insurrection was deadly, propagandists pointed to the death of an officer called Brian Sicknick. The mob killed Officer Brian Sicknick. That's what they said. It was their single most powerful indictment of the January 6th protesters and of Donald Trump and of Republican voters nationally. They repeated that claim for years. They are still repeating it. At first, they told the country that Officer Sicknick was murdered with a fire All right, we'll continue. All right, we will continue. That is Prager Show. There's a lot of talk about the Great Reset and digital currencies. The U.S. government has been floating the idea of a digital dollar for quite some time, opening up the door to the government controlling your bank account, or worse yet, freezing your money. They did that in Canada, remember? This is Dennis Prager for AmFed, Coin, and Bullion, and for my friend Nick Grovich. Now more than ever in this woke world, it's important to own tangible assets like gold and silver. Owning physical gold and silver gives you control over your wealth. They're proven, stable commodities that have held their value over time. Beyond the overarching reach of government, and it's so important you do business with a trustworthy and transparent company like AmFed Coin and Bullion, AmFed's owner Nick and his experienced team will always provide you with honest, sound advice. No pressure sales. Moving a portion of your wealth into precious metals is a prudent decision. Call AmFed Coin and Bullion. 800-221-7694. AmericanFederal.com. AmericanFederal.com. Okay, everybody. Dennis Prager here playing for you. Tucker Carlson, who was given the tens of thousands of hours of video. I wrote uh, on January, let's see, I wrote five days later that the term insurrection was a grandiose lie, and it turns out to have been one. Overwhelmingly, it was just people milling around the Capitol. The only person killed by anybody was, or I don't know if it was more than one, was one woman who was murdered by a Capitol officer and, of course, exonerated immediately. 
had it been a left-wing mob going into the capital, as left-wing mobs went into many state capitals, for example, uh, and shot, and it was a black demonstrator shot by a white policeman, you would know everything about it. That policeman would have been put on trial, needless to say, and probably sentenced to a long prison term. But this was a black officer killing a white person for no good reason, and nothing happened. We have a completely corrupted judicial system wherever the left is in charge. That is the reason for the staggering. The left is the reason for the staggering crime rates, but it doesn't mean a thing to them. They continue to believe that fewer police and more social workers is the answer to crime. They never address the issue, for example, of the lack of fathers, but rather the proliferation of guns. It's an interesting question to ask somebody in your life. If you could have one wish, more gun laws or more fathers, which do you think would be better for the society in terms of violent crime? That's a good one. That's the way you should phrase it. And you don't even have to then comment. Just say, look, I'm a a believer in this notion that clarity is more important than agreement, so just in the in the name of clarity, I'd just like to know, what, what do you think would reduce violent crime more? More fathers or more gun laws? All right, we continue with Tucker Carlson and the video, which you can see on my video channel. Take Continue, please. They are still repeating it. At first, they told the country that Officer Sicknick was murdered with a fire extinguisher. Officer Brian Sicknick died after being hit in the head with a fire extinguisher during the fight. That story came from the New York Times, which is effectively the assignment editor for most of the rest of American media. It was a lie, untrue in any way. But only after that lie had hardened into conventional wisdom did the newspaper bother to retract it. The New York Times has quietly retracted its story about the death of Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick. The damage had been done. Brian Sicknick, himself a Trump voter, had been transformed without his consent into a political martyr of the left. His memory was shamelessly exploited by the incoming Biden administration. In February of 2021, Sicknick's body lay in state in the Capitol Rotunda, where a parade of unscrupulous politicians made use of it. Here's Joe Biden. Breaking down the doors, trying to overturn an outcome of election, and killing several police officers in the meantime. But Brian Sicknick should not be reduced to a prop for the political ambitions of the Democratic Party. He was a human being. The facts of his life matter, including how he died. To this day, media accounts describe Sicknick as someone who was, quote, slain on January 6th. The video we reviewed proves that is a lie. Here is surveillance footage of Sicknick walking in the Capitol after he was supposedly murdered by the mob outside. By all appearances, Sicknick is healthy and vigorous. He's wearing a helmet, so it's hard to imagine he was killed by a head injury. Whatever happened to Brian Sicknick was very obviously not the result of violence he suffered at the entrance to the Capitol. This tape overturns the single most powerful and politically useful lie the Democrats have told us about January 6th. And it was indeed a lie. The January 6th committee knew perfectly well that Brian Sicknick was walking normally through the Capitol after he was supposedly murdered by Trump supporters. And they know that because they saw this tape. We can be sure because the footage contains an electronic bookmark that is still archived in the Capitol's computer system. All right, we'll continue in a moment uh, with uh, what the very, very scary stuff about January 6th, and the scary stuff was not the so-called insurrection. It was the way it has been used, and the word insurrection. Hello, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. Tucker Carlson last night began showing a a small fraction of the tens of thousands of hours of video that the Democrats had suppressed when they were in charge of Congress. Those of you who differ with me on my assessment that it was not an insurrection, which was my assessment within days of the 
of days of January 6th, I wrote that the Democrats are using this by calling it an insurrection the way the Nazis used the Reichstag fire to suppress liberty in the country, which is exactly what has been the case ever since. With the jailing of people who went into the Capitol that day and the horrible conditions under which they have been held, people with no criminal records who were decent human beings, but who uh, Merrick Garland, Joe Biden, and the New York Times want to punish as severely as possible because they hate Trump supporters. I mean, they really hate them. How could they not hate them? They believe that they are neo-Nazis, that uh, some of them want to lynch blacks, as our vile president said uh, last week. So here is something that you that I didn't know about, I just uh, was made aware of. January 12th, six days after the events of January 6th, the Associated Press, which is left of center, not, not a conservative news source, said, uh, as wrote as follows, the Capitol Police, who have authority over the Capitol grounds, repeatedly declined support from the Guard, that is the National Guard, before Wednesday. It's a, it's a somewhat of an oblique statement, So, but it's still interesting. It certainly verifies the fact that somebody declined having a presence at the Capitol. Now, what's interesting is repeatedly declined support from the Guard. That means the National Guard, I mean, I, unless, unless I'm reading it incorrectly, means the National Guard did request to have presence at the Capitol. And why would the National Guard make that request? And why would the... Capitol Police turn it down. Again, I have said that Nancy Pelosi had uh, refused to authorize National Guard presence or police presence. She does not have that authority to do so. I was mistaken, and I will keep telling you that I was mistaken because the only thing I have is credibility. The only thing you have is the only thing anyone has. When you lose that, all is lost. It's a very important uh, lesson. And yet, one of the biggest liars in this country, Adam Schiff, has announced that he is going to run, or it is presumed he's going to run for the Senate from California. I live in California. I'm currently in Florida. It's almost as if they live, they're members of two different countries. But we'll leave that for now. Let me take some calls here. I was talking to an active member of the military in North Carolina, Dylan. And Dylan, you were mentioning that after January 6th, the head of the Joint Chiefs, you mentioned Millie, and they were exposing the soldiers uh, to, what was it, like uh, education sessions about about what? About terrorism? About what exactly? They were really vague in the labels. Uh, they called it violent extremism, and they had all these supposed hate groups that they would list, and their logos, um, no one took it seriously, ever knew it was a complete joke. Um, but actually someone I'm very close with was personally affected by this because they had a sticker on their car, which was completely harmless. But under this corrupt and sick Department of Defense, this person was now considered an extremist for having the sticker on their car, and they came under investigation. Um, It was noted in the investigation that they had quotes from individuals such as yourself and Jordan Peterson on their desk at work. Um, their livelihood was threatened, their career was threatened, and their family was threatened. I literally could not believe it was even happening. I literally 
Never thought I'd see anything like this happening in America. It's something I'd expect from a third world dictatorship, but not from uh, this country. Are they still demanding on another subject, Dylan? Are they still demanding that uh, members of the armed forces be vaccinated? From my understanding right now, that is no longer mandatory. It was at the time, and they were get, kicking people out for not getting the vaccine. But as of right now, they are not mandating that. Were the people that they that they let go from the armed forces, were they honorably or dishonorably discharged, or is there a third form of discharge? I believe it was other than honorable. And is there any movement to reinstating them? Not that I'm aware of. The only person I've heard mention that is Donald Trump. Other than that, I have not heard anyone mention that. <laughs> did did you soldiers amongst yourselves talk about the guys kicked out because of the mandate? I can't particularly say. Um, actually, I do have to say it was extremely depressing to see how many people I considered warriors for patriotism and individual liberty who were just so willing to accept some experimental mRNA gene therapy without asking any questions. Um, there was incentives put out by chain of commands where if you were to get a booster shot, which was not mandatory, it was voluntary, the booster shot, but they would give out four-day weekends to those individuals who would get the booster. And so many people that I thought I respected and I knew would just Go, go and do this thing, like risk their own livelihood, risk their family's livelihood over some experimental shot that they did no research on. I just couldn't believe it. For a four-day weekend? Correct, for essentially two days off work. <laughs> God. So what, what, is, what is your morale and what is the morale uh, of your fellow soldiers to the best of your ability to say? The vast majority of soldiers in the Army love this country. They are patriots. Um, but unfortunately, due to the nature of the military, they're not they're, – they're so used to obeying orders and doing what they're told that even if it's tyrannical and, and goes against common sense, that often they don't challenge it. Okay. Listen, thank you for everything, and God bless you. Thank you, Dennis. Right. Okay, let's see here. Here's a challenge. This, this guy's a regular, but he disagrees, so I'll, I'll overlook it. Hello, Tom in Tallahassee. Thanks for overlooking it. Uh, first of all, July 22nd, 2022, Wall Street Journal, Donald Trump did not order the military. Wall Street Journal, you respect, so I thought maybe you'd, you'd want to hear that. Number two, the president is the commander-in-chief. Nobody can overrule him. The mayor of D.C. is irrelevant. Kennedy and Johnson sent the army into Mississippi and Alabama. George Wallace certainly didn't comply or, or accept that, but they did it anyway. Number three, 10 minutes of videotape does not change hours and hours and hours of videotape that we saw during the January 6 hearings of policemen being beaten with metal poles, being sprayed with pepper spray and bear spray. It doesn't change that 80 police officers were seriously injured. It doesn't change that 230 people have been convicted, not accused, not indicted, but convicted of assaulting police officers. None of that has changed. It was definitely a violent insurrection. There's no other explanation for what happened. How many people went into the Capitol armed? I don't know. What if it's zero or two? Would you still say it was an insurrection? It doesn't change anything. They, 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 they killed no, people. They, beat they attempted to. Metal poles. They beat police uh -huh. officers with so metal they, poles. So they, I see. They, they came in armed with metal poles, usually flagged. No, they took them from the barricades. Uh, they were barricades. Right, okay. They broke them apart and so beat the, them with metal so, poles. Right. They pepper sprayed there's them. No part, there's there's kind of no part of you that wonders why nobody came to an insurrection with a gun? Does pepper spray or bear spray count as them being armed? No. It, why not? You've been because you can't take before? because they're armed. You can't between pepper spray and guns. Guns win. My friends, a food shortage could be coming. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's true. So survival food is important. 
Create your own stockpile of the best-selling For Patriots Survival Food Kits. It's not ordinary food. We're talking good for 25 years super survival food. Hand-packed right in a family-owned facility in the USA, giving jobs to over 200 Americans. The kits are compact, sturdy, water-resistant, and stack easily. They have different delicious breakfasts, lunches, dinners. You can make these meals in less than 20 minutes. Just add boiling water, simmer, and serve. Right now, you can go to 4Patriots. That's the number 4. 4 patriotscom Use the code Prager to get 10% off your first purchase on anything in the store. You get their famous year-long guarantee after your order and free shipping on orders over $97. Just go to 4Patriots.com to get 10% off with the code Prager for the number 4Patriots.com, code Prager. So we're talking about the so-called insurrection. I'm doing even more research now. Um, the claim that the president, now the president cannot order, though the last caller said, well, what about the Eisenhower ordering troops into Little Rock, for example, to uh, integrate schools there? So uh, the Associated Press article written within a week of January 6th says it is an extremely complex uh, issue of who has the authority uh, for uh, guard guardsmen and police at the Capitol. So uh, I, I don't have an answer for you. There are two separate issues. Did the president say anything with regard to national guards, national guardsmen at the Capitol or police at the Capitol? Why did why did the police refuse requests to have more police there? That was reported uh, again in the in the AP piece, and the question of was it an insurrection? It's it, it's uh, it's a painful question in light of many things, including 2020. The amount of damage, including death, the takeovers of of municipal buildings by the left-wing rioters of 2020. The the damage done so much so that businesses are fleeing Seattle and Portland, especially Portland. And New York City has not yet recovered the staggering increase in violent crime in all these Democrat-run cities. And it was inaugurated by the government doing essentially nothing with regard to left-wing rioters. But then, like a fascist regime, jailing people who entered the Capitol on January 6th. I know of one case where a man was convicted because the last caller mentioned, well, these people have been convicted. I would say that the Washington, D.C. jury is as reliable, morally, and in terms of truth, with regard to uh, those who are brought to trial for January 6th, as a racist jury was uh, in the, the heyday of racism in the United States when a black was accused of a crime against a white. You had almost automatic verdicts there that disregarded truth. We now have automatic verdicts in Washington, D.C., which is why the government insists that all these trials be there. They should be moved to a neutral area, as often trials are. I know a man who was convicted on every single count the government brought against him, and the videos shown in the courtroom showed him actually trying to help a police officer who was hurt. But it didn't matter. But the the larger question is, do you think that the left is good for the country in whatever they're doing? The decline of the universities, as I described to you yesterday, the decline in the arts, the decline in elementary schools and high schools, and of course the ultimate evil, taking troubled, sometimes simply mentally ill kids 
and having them join a cult. I now regard the transgenderism, not all transgender people, but the transgenderism as a cult. And uh, I was reading the latest story of a woman, young woman, who had permanent horrible damage done to her body and to her mind by despicable people at children's hospitals and the despicable therapists who were part of the cult. It is a cult, and what they do is they love bomb you. I, I had not known that. This was new, but it makes perfect sense. You have you have issues? Join our cult, the transgender cult. Not all transgender are cultists. I fully acknowledge that. But many are. The activists are. The activists form a cult. And what they do, like all cults, is they love bomb you. You have problems. The problems emanate from you're not being loved, will love you. And they emanate from you're really not being a boy if you were born one or a girl if you were born one. They emanate from the fact that you are trapped in a boy's body or trapped in a girl's body. And they're troubled to begin with, and they and they believe the lovers, these love bombers. That's another evil of the left. So if you align yourself with them, you you have to answer to God, and I have to answer to God for aligning myself with their opponents. That's true. I couldn't agree more with that. Okay, let's see here. Ventura, California, and Grant, hello. Yes, uh, Mr. Prager, uh, in regards to the Reichstag fire and the Nazis and in, in regards to um, how you related it to the left, uh, on CNN today, Ken Burns, I'm not sure if he's left or right, but he, he, he made the statement, the way the Nazis would build a Pokemon Pope, Pokemon Village, Tucker Carlson is doing the same thing with the footage from 1-6. It's a rewriting of history at the most dangerous level. So I just thought that was interesting uh-huh. that you had mentioned that in the first half hour, and then he's saying oh, okay. this. The word is, yeah, the word is Potemkin Village. Yeah, I, I don't know what has, that has to do with anything. Look, I have to see what he said. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Mike Lindell with my pillow is launching the My Pillow 2.0. When Mike invented MyPillow, it had everything you could ever want in a pillow. Now, nearly 20 years later, he discovered a new technology that makes it even better. The MyPillow 2.0 has the patented adjustable fill of the original MyPillow, and now with a brand new fabric that is made with a temperature-regulating thread. The MyPillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow you'll ever own. For my listeners, the MyPillow 2.0 is buy one, get one free offer with promo code Prager. MyPillow 2.0 temperature regulating technology is 100% made in the USA and comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Just go to MyPillow.com and click on the radio listeners square to the buy one, get one free offer. Enter promo code Prager or call 800-761-6302 to get your MyPillow 2.0 now. So it's interesting, a caller is calling in that when I speak about there being no guns at a so-called insurrection, their guns had been confiscated. I, I had never heard that, but I don't see how that invalidates the point. You can't have an insurrection even if your guns are confiscated. There's no such thing as an insurrection that is unarmed. And taking polls, some people of the th- many thousands who entered or whatever number took polls, uh, that is not, uh, that to me, if you want to be honest, is not an insurrection. All right, let's see here. Excellent. March is Prager U fundraising month and if you're worried about the country 
Uh, I can't think of a better way. There are any number of good ways, but I can't think of a better way to help the country than to support PragerU. We have a billion views a year, and believe it or not, 60% or 65%, I forget which, are views of people who are under the age of 35. Last night, here in Florida, my wife and I were having dinner, and a young woman walked over. She's a waitress, or as they now say, server. She came over, and she had an accent. I asked where she was from, or she even immediately said, hi, I love your work. I watch your fireside chat. I watch PragerU all the time. I'm from Italy. So here was an Italian young woman. I, I, I don't believe she was over 30. An Italian young woman. And it happens wherever I go. It's young people coming over. We're really influencing people. I feel sometimes it's a race between PragerU and, of course, our allies, many wonderful groups, and the left. It's a race. And the more money we raise, the more we can publicize what we do, and the more we produce, and the more lives we touch. Go to PragerU.com. I have on the line Lindsay Running. She's a PragerU kids homeschooling mom. Is that a correct description of you, Lindsay? Yes. Well, so tell, what does that mean, you're a PragerU kids homeschooling mom? Go ahead. Okay, so I live in Overland Park, Kansas, and I have six kids that range from three to almost 13. And we've been homeschooling them the whole time. And I came across PragerU through um, the adult channel originally, and it really resonated with me, and I wanted to know what was going on. So I joined PrEP, and I was able to access all these materials, all these kids' shows, and um, my kids really took to them. And then recently we watched one on Theodore Roosevelt, and my kids were asking to make the teddy bears, which are so adorable. So I put a picture of them on the prep group page and um, was I heard about this call and I thought, well, I can do that. I'm engaged in this material, um, and that's why I'm here. Wow. So how long how long ago did you discover us? I want to say it was about two years ago during the pandemic, maybe a little bit longer ago than that. Wow, interesting. So it's, look, it, it, it does my heart good to speak to someone like you. What I'd like you to address is what stops more people from homeschooling. Can you in a, in a, in briefly make the case that it sounds more intimidating than it is, or is it really intimidating? I think it sounds more intimidating that it is when we think about our climate and how much information is available at our fingertips, how many services are available, how many groups are available right now to homeschoolers. Um, People can do it. It just, there's a sacrifice. Some people are dual income, many are, so that's a big sacrifice. And then um, people worry about their kids and the social aspects of homeschooling and things like that. But I think that a lot of people... Um, who think they couldn't do it could if they desire to do that. Yeah, stay on with me, because this is there's nothing more important than getting kids out of our schools. Hi, everybody. Dennis Prager and the ultimate issues, as they would say in Britain, issues hour. You know, when I first started it, I thought, well, people, will people realize how important this is because it's, You know, it's not on the issues of the day necessarily. It's on ultimate issues, obviously. Turns out that if you're not clear on ultimate issues, uh, then things will be very bad for you and for your society. These are the, the big issues. 
So today, unlike almost every other time, there will be a political element to it. I try to usually depoliticize the Ultimate Issues Hour, but if Ultimate Issues are supposed to be related to life, then you can't help it on, on occasion. So I'm going to talk to you about something that is an ultimate issue and is also a happiness issue, is also a regular hour issue, maybe not specifically a male-female issue. Well, it wouldn't qualify for the male-female hour, I'll acknowledge. But it's something for you to think about, and that is, do you fight or do you despair when you're losing? I'm talking about on a societal level, I mean, I'm talking about an individual level to you personally, but I'm I'm not talking about only personal issues when you're you're losing, do you despair or do you fight? Although it would apply on the micro, I'm talking about the macro in particular. And it, it, there's no question that those of us who love liberty, first of all, I mean, just on that grounds, we're losing. It, it is uh, it is silly and self-defeating to deny it. We're losing. Uh, those of us who love the American experiment in freedom, which entails, by definition, small government, we're losing. Government is bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The debt is bigger and bigger and bigger. The expenses of the state are bigger and bigger and bigger. The amount of money people want from the state is bigger and bigger and bigger. And they, they're, most people, or at least a good chunk of people, are totally prepared to take things for free, thinking they're free. Not understanding that the, the deal is with the devil. We'll give you money, you give us your soul. A lot of people are happy to make that trade. Anything for free lunch for my kid at school or even a free breakfast. Anything for free health care. Anything for for free tuition. Anything for free daycare. Free. Of course, there's, there's no such thing as free, though. It, somebody's paying for it, obviously, so it's not free. You might be among those paying for it, but certainly others are. And you pay for it in in many ways, because you don't make the decisions about your life then. The people who give you the free stuff make the decisions for your life. That's why waiting lists in America, where health care was, was generally private, you, you, pay, you paid for it through usually insurance, and the waiting lines, the waiting time for an MRI is much lower in America than in Canada or England, where there is national health care. But it will be increasing the more the government is involved, because it will determine costs, not the, not the buyers. At any rate, the bigger question is for the Ultimate Issues Hour, what do you do when you're losing? Do you despair or do you fight? But if you look at history, every model we have of of a a great moment in history, morally great, is when people who were losing arose and won. Britain was losing to Nazi Germany. And then Churchill said, you don't despair, you fight on the sea and on the land and on the air. And that's what he spoke. We will fight. And he said we will fight when it looked completely dark. England was alone. It was not being aided by the United States at the time, certainly not, not, not only not with troops, but generally not aided at all. Gradually, of course, America did come to aid and did enter the war. But in the beginning, he was alone. And his country was alone. And 
I'm sure that he could have felt it's over. Let's let's give up, spare lives, and that's after all, in, in effect, what his predecessor, Neville Chamberlain, had argued, peace in our time, let Hitler take Czechoslovakia, and then we'll, uh, we'll have peace. Very tempting. You give in to despair. Same with George Washington. It looked very, very grim for the colonial army. Very grim. Against the most powerful country on earth, Great Britain. He certainly could have despaired, as could have the people following him. That is the way life works. By the way, not everybody who rises up against evil wins. Maybe in the very long run, but I I don't find the very long run to be particularly comforting. Because we don't live in the long run, we live in the short run. And all the people who die in the short run, they don't get their lives back. And I do believe in a hereafter, but that's, in this case, beside the point. So this, as I said, could have been on a happiness hour, because if you fight, you're also happier. But I think it's an ultimate issue. How do you vanquish evil when you're losing? It's easy to vanquish evil when you're winning. So the question is pointless. How do you vanquish vanquish evil when you're losing? And that is the state of those of us who love liberty for first and foremost. Just remember, if you don't think we're losing, just look at the cancel culture. Look at the fact that, for example, I would argue 90% of women, young women on women's teams, swim teams, let alone weightlifting teams, wrestling teams, basketball teams, doesn't matter what, or individual sports like tennis, I would say probably 90% know it's completely, thoroughly unfair for a biological male who says he's a female to compete against them. But they shut up because they are so afraid of speaking out. The most, I think the best known example is the University of Pennsylvania swim team, the female swim team. And they had a biological male named Leah Thomas who said he was a female after he was a mediocre swimmer in male sports and became a championship swimmer in female sports. And they were warned by the University of Pennsylvania a force for bad, for evil on this planet, uh, that if they speak up, they they will be hurt badly in terms of their chances of going into anything after college and even perhaps at the college level itself. So in case you think we're winning, just be aware of the University of Pennsylvania f- girls swim team. That should suffice. But the examples are legion, where people are shut down for espousing different opinions. Freedom in this country is in jeopardy when 45% of young Americans, 45% according to Pew, say that they believe in free speech, but not for free freedom of hate speech, not understanding that Free, free speech means speech you think is hate speech. So what do you do when you're losing? That's the ultimate issues question. One eight Prager seven seven six. So when it brought me to my knees, well, Hello everybody, Dennis Prager. One eight Prager seven seven six. The ultimate issues hour. And it, it's different from other ultimate issues hour because it's it's a psychological issue. It's a happiness issue. Uh, it, it's, but it really is an ultimate issue. What do you do when you're fighting evil and you're losing? Well, you have really two choices, and that is despair or fight. 
And every model we have of great victories have been when people thought they were losing, like in the American Revolution with George Washington, like with Churchill fighting Hitler, they were losing. Now, that doesn't mean everybody who's losing wins. But it does mean that everybody who has won after losing did not despair. I I read, I told you this, oh, I'd say probably half a year ago in research for my forthcoming fourth volume of my Bible commentary, the book of Numbers, the fourth book of the Bible or the Torah, the first five books, and one of the scholars that I read had a great line, and he said, despair is a sin. He was speaking theologically, and uh, it really got to me. It, it, it was his commentary on the despair of the Israelite spies who went into Canaan, and they despaired of ever defeating the Canaanites. And he says the lesson of that story is despair is a sin. It's a great, great line. I love great lines. Uh, I think in terms of lines myself. How can you summarize a big thought in a little line? That is your option in life when fighting. Right now, for the first time in American history, free speech is being shut down. There is a war against free speech. It is already lost on campuses. It is lost in many corporations. And it's that's why a lot of people don't speak up. They're afraid of being fired. If you differ with Disney and you do it publicly, there's a good chance you will be fired. If you just say at Disney there are two sexes, male and female, you might get fired. That is how sick Disney has become. I I don't despair at all, and I am really in the thick of the battle. I am aware on a daily basis I have no choice. Even if I wanted to choose, I have no choice but to be aware of how much the dark forces are, are winning and the damage they are doing to our children, whether it was two years of lockdown, masking two-year-olds and five-year-olds, masking every adult that they saw except at home. I mean, not to mention the the you're not a boy or a girl issue. So I'm aware of it. I don't despair. But I, I don't delude myself into thinking we're winning. Delusion is not helpful because anyway if you think you're winning you won't fight as hard right 1-8 Prager 776 let's go to Tom in Trenton New Jersey hello Tom of Trenton hi how's it going Dennis well thank you so I uh, listen to you about despair and fighting and I'm in a a point of despair based on um, so I run a job training program for unemployed, underemployed folks in impoverished areas. And our job is to train folks up in a six-week period and work to place them in jobs. And this has become an increasing challenge because of, uh, you know, mentality that folks have coming into the program about attendance, lateness, and we see a lot of it um, as this thing that's been enabled over decades and decades of one's life, and it has been something that we found that you can't turn around in a six-week training program and then, you know, place you in a job, and then all of a sudden everything is fixed. It's We get to a point where we need to make accommodations and give people second, third, fourth, fifth plus chances because of numbers and things like that. And it gets to a point where, you know, you feel as though, why am I pulling my hair out trying to, you know, work with people to place them in a job, which 
you know, they'll quit in a week because they can't show up every day. And so um, I've gotten, especially after COVID, you know, with folks, you know, getting used to that, you know, sort of, you know, free kind of, you know, mentality of things getting handed out. Um, now trying to get the workforce up going, up and going, it's been this, this crazy, crazy endeavor with, with how many people that places. how many what percentage of the people that you train at those the training work they will stay at a job oh uh, for for how long of a period well i guess that answers my question doesn't it <laughs> uh, I, I, for a I mean, year you know, for a year oof uh maybe 30 percent or less and that's a, that's a good number Okay, so would those 30% without your training program have stayed for a year? Uh, that's, I mean, that's a good question. Um, I think that a lot of these folks need to get just literally placed in a job as opposed to going out, bringing a resume with you, get it, just having the... the right. Uh, all, what I'm really asking is, are you responsible for any success? Uh, some, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess, you know. Okay, it, so it, you have a choice. Okay, so we have to take a break. You you have a choice. And that is to say the, the real majority, it doesn't work at all what I'm doing, but it makes a difference in some people's lives. We have Hi, everybody. Ultimate Issues Hour, third hour every Tuesday. And it's different from most. It is it is partially philosophic, but it's partially everything. Psychological, personal. And that is, when you're losing, do you despair or do you fight? And let us say that Almost every good cause has been in a losing phase. I gave Churchill and George Washington as ex- as examples. They had an easy way to despair at the beginning, and they didn't. And in the United States today, we are fi- fighting an unprecedented battle against horrific forces, suppressing liberty, the great message of America. Instead of a sweet land of liberty, it is a bitter land of suppression for many people, not entirely, or I wouldn't be speaking, and that's important to remember. I am speaking. You are listening. The uh, We're losing, but it's way, way far from lost. The trajectory is awful. The sickness that pervades colleges, but interestingly, uh, I could, I could, maybe I should devote an hour to all the good signs. I'll tell you, uh, just appropriate. It's March. It's fundraising month for PragerU. We're a good sign. A billion views, mostly people under thirty-five years of age. Why isn't that a good sign? Do you think the world would be better or America better if PragerU just said, we despair, we're going to go home? Of course not. Do you think it even occurs to any of us? And we're keen of of what's happening. By the way, it is fundraising month. And by the way, also, please know that right now, whatever you give will be matched. So you give $100, you're really giving $200. You give $50, you're really giving $100. Give a thousand, it's two thousand, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just go to PragerU.com, PragerUniversity.com. I, I personally am keenly aware of the trajectory. If it continues like this, America is lost to truly dark, vicious forces. They're misanthropes. They they loathe humanity and they loathe humans. They loathe liberty, uh, but there's no guarantee that that it'll continue. There's pushback. Look at Florida, where I'm located right now. 
Why doesn't Florida give you reason to say, wait a minute, what are you talking about, despair? They didn't despair in Florida, and they're turning things around, and it's the most moved-to state in the country. It is the best state on, by almost every economic, social barometer. So even the despair part is not only a bad idea in terms of winning, it's a, it's a, a bad idea because it's not accurate. There are more signs of, of resistance in the United States than there were in Britain in the early days of, of the Nazi bombings of London. Then they, they appeared to just be targets for German aircraft just to, to kill people. No, no, so uh, it, despair is uh, somewhat of a lazy response uh, to uh, the, the crisis that we are in now, or most crises. I mean, you have a terminal illness. Despair doesn't work, but it's totally understandable if, if, you, if you experience that. All right, 1-8 Prager 776. Jeff in Dallas. Hello, Jeff. Hey, thank you, Dennis, for bringing me on your show. So you thank asked you. a great question. Um, I have not called a show in quite some time. I've been traveling. But you asked a question. We draw the line in this time. We're going to, America is not only a country, but we're an idea. The, the fundamental question is, are we a good idea or not to a generation, to our millennials and to Generation Z? And for some of us that were born in the certain time, we are an idea. And so it appears that looking at some of the things that happen in our time, it looks like they're happening on many fronts, socially, economically, politically, religiously, etc. That's right. You got it right. You understand. America is an idea. You kill the idea, you kill America. Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial-free, every single day, become a member of PragerTopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com.